What's up guys, this is Matt working for Cinematography Database and today we're going to be looking at a couple things in Cinema 4D and Cine Designer uh, that hopefully helps you guys out a little bit. I've been doing a lot of Cine Designer stuff lately and mostly content for my main YouTube channel which is more of a general cinematography thing but uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit more for this channel as well. So this is the content browser. I'm going to probably have to dedicate a video towards it but this is where I keep uh, most of my pre-made textures which is not a lot. I don't use a lot of textures at the moment. I uh, have a lot of Fuse characters, a laptop, some cars from um, 3D Warehouse. And then I'm also starting to put them here as well, so just Fuse. These are like the characters, you might recognize them. Uh, some of them are for projects that aren't out yet. But uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab one of these pre-made textures. Uh, pretty much this one. I like this wood floor one, it's from Polygon. Did I make a, a, a video about Polygon? I forget. Um, so what we have to check here is you have to go to this. And it's going to go to UV mapping and you don't want that. You want it to go to flat. And then it looks crazy, right? It's like, what's going on? I don't know why this isn't just default like this, but um, you're going to click this texture thing up there. I'm hitting R to go to rotate. I'm holding shift and I'm going to bring this plane so that it's like in line with the plane instead of it being like perpendicular. So now this texture is going to map onto this floor pretty easily. So I can just like infinitely change this floor, um, the dimensions of it, but the texture will look nice. And this is a very nice texture from Polygon, so when you actually go to render it, it will be all bumpy and shiny and all that cool stuff. I'll have to make a video about that too. There's a lot with 3D stuff, as you guys um, are probably finding out. So I wanted to, wanted to do something about render settings as well, so I'm gonna go into our lighting truck here, and let's bring, I don't know, what are we gonna do here? Let's do something simple like a six by frame and so which way is this light going to be facing? It's that way. And if you hear kids music in the background, that's uh, that's my son watching YouTube. I'm quote unquote uh, watching him today, but really I'm working and he's just going to be chilling in the background. Uh, and we're going to get lunch in a little bit. But anyway, uh, so here we go. And so there's a, there's a very small weird scene so far. And I'm going to go back to my content browser. And bring in one of my newer Fuse characters that actually look a little bit better. I'm going to go with um, the Share Grid one. This is a, a character I made for my Share Grid video. They did a, a vintage lens test and I built their lighting setup as a co-marketing effort in 3D. Uh, speaking of co-marketing, we've got a lot of cool things coming and things for this channel specifically like how do you model a soundstage. Um, I'm going to be doing a live action video breaking down how I model sound stages quickly, how I scout them. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but I think it'll be a fun video and it's specifically for this channel. And there's just a bunch of other new things happening. That's why I've been spending so much time on the other YouTube channel, but they will eventually make their way over here. I'm going to use the wall and we're just going to make a real simple scene here. Um, I know set designer is looking a little bit long in the tooth, right? Like I need to update this thing. I really want to because I use it all of the time to make my other videos um, and I want it to be better, be able to change the textures and all that stuff. I just haven't had the resources to do that yet. That that turns into like, I would say, if you're used to software development, that's going to turn into like a month long sprint for me, which means that I dedicate almost every day for like a month or maybe a, two weeks, something like that, a while to making it work. Um, plugin development, especially something like set designer, which is going to be pretty involved. Um, is going to require me to get an investment of time from my developer to work on that with me because there's things that I need to design and he needs to code and it's it's a big project uh, financially and time-wise and we're just not ready as a company yet to dump into that. So excuses, excuses, I know. But that's, um, that's kind of why that's on hold for now. It's going to cost a little bit for us to put that together. But it'll be really cool when it's done. Um, there's really nothing like that in its class for any system that I've seen that allows you to do this that quickly. So again, this is, I'm sorry, this is taking a long time. We're going to look at some render settings. I'm not even going to use a camera. So let's turn on this light, right? So that looks kind of, is that reasonable? It looks a little bit bright maybe, so 40. I should really update to R18. Um, just haven't felt like it yet. <laughs> I should, but I'm not going to for a little bit. So let's go to the render settings here. So 960 by 540. So if you are working in a 16 by 9 timeline, 960 by 540, I think that's like a really reasonable place to start. Don't start your renders at like 720 or 1080. That just doesn't make sense. You switch to 1080 um, like this, 
at the end. So start your renders off at 960 by 540. Go to 1080 only at the end when you're uh, pretty much done with everything else. So standard, yeah, we don't use standard, but let's look at what physical looks like. We're going to go to physical here. Um, this is all fine. I honestly wouldn't ever change this unless like you really, really want the quality high. But if you change anything here, your render times are going to take forever. So we're going to take this to 1, 1, ambient occlusion 0, surface scattering. So 1, 1, really simple. So let's look what something like this takes to render. Shouldn't be too bad. Hitting Shift R, we're gonna let this thing crank. I'm on a MacBook Pro. Nothing crazy. So yeah, so this is going pretty quickly. And I would work in this mode for a while. So there's no GI, there's no bouncing, it's just the direct from the sources. Of course, if you're using space lights or something that requires GI, this isn't gonna work. But again, this took 10 seconds. Uh, I think that's pretty workable. And even if we add another light, holding control, this lighting setup, of course, makes no sense. Maybe it does, I don't know. Um, wow. This is a really good demo so far. Um, so let's change this to like, I don't know, blue. We go to 10K Kelvin. Render it off again. So two lights at um, 540p with a pretty, you know, that texture, you know, because of the reflection of the floor. Uh, is pretty intense for some systems and it has a fuse character which has a lot of things going on as well and this looks like it's going to take around 30 seconds so I think this is like the bare minimum this is like the lowest setting you can get away with but even with one sample um, and blurriness and shadow it's completely usable you can completely go to town with this and send this off and people would know what you're talking about as far as lighting so I really recommend you working in this setting uh, in the beginning just to get things going quickly so one, one, and this could probably even go lower, honestly, but I think this is the lowest setting you'd really want to use. As we go to adding GI here, um, let's start with like the lowest again. So you can go to low and low, especially this irradiance cache doesn't need to be very high until we get into like certain interior situations, but irradiance cache is pretty quick, not that accurate, but pretty quick. So if you twirl, if you twirl down samples here, this is one of the most important things here. There's all this other stuff like low, medium, high. Honestly, you just want to work probably directly with accuracy. So low is that. So you could go to like 25. Let's see how terrible this looks. Um, it should be pretty bad, but we're going to hit render. So it's doing an irradiance cache, cache pass pretty quickly because the quality is so bad. And it looks like this is going to take about the same time. That irradiance cache was really fast. And so this is going to allow for one bounce of light. So this light that hits the floor is likely going to bounce up and hit her, so she's going to get like an orange underlight, which, like you would from a, a scene like this, with an orange floor. And how much longer is this taking? I see render time for this. Oh, so the last one was 26. And with a GI irradiance pass, pass with really low settings, it took 34 seconds. So it added 10 seconds to it to add that extra bounce light. Um, but if you see over here, this light is just blue because there's no bouncing, and as we add the GI to it, it's a little bit, has a little bit more orange from this and that bouncing into it. So it gets a little bit more realistic. Again, this is completely good enough to go out um, for most projects. It's not like a beauty render by any chance or by any means, but uh, pretty good. So 25, really low. Also really low. Um, I think the presets make there, there's a lot there to go over, which I don't think you guys need to get into unless you really, really care about it. Um, again, to go one step further, we're going to go to light mapping, which allows even more bouncing. 5,000, turn on pre-filter. And let's see how this looks. I probably should have saved this scene in case this whole thing crashes, but I'm not gonna. So that's a light mapping pass with 5,000 samples. So this is gonna allow for multiple bounces. I forget how many, like 20 or so? It's a lot. I think you can set it. It's a lot. Um, it is kind of a hack calculation. It's not like a QMC Arnold style render, and nor is it um, nor is it GPU enabled like iRay or Octane. But honestly, as nice as those renders are, they're fast. And I, I don't know, like, I guess the majority of professional Cinema 4D users are kind of going to that. For me, they're super crashy. Um, I can make a video about Octane where I like kind of like build out scenes and it just eventually it crashes, right? That's just what happens. And that's just not good. I would rather it take, what is this? This is 40 seconds. For me, and you guys let me know what you think. I would rather it take 40 seconds, not crash, 
um, so I can kind of gauge how long it's going to take. Once GPU renders don't crash my computer constantly, I 100% switch to one. I just still haven't found one that's very nice, in my opinion. So yeah, so that added 10 more seconds for another pass, and you see that the shadows... Look at the shadows, essentially here. Look at the shadows um, back here. With no GI at all, they're just blue, so it's not very realistic. Um, with GI, they're a little bit oranger. They're filled in because of the bouncing off the floor. And with um, with our, what is it, Irradiance Cache, multiple bounces, they're even lighter. And again, these are all just uh, simulations. They're not actual reality, but you're going to go for what makes sense for you. This for Quick and Dirty, I think your crew is going to get that. If you're talking to a director, this might be a little bit more realistic. And if you're just being like, you know, anal about it, this is even better. Certain scenes are going to require it. Others don't. So those are like really low settings. And honestly, I think you could go to town with just that. But let me show you how you crank it up, obviously. Um, ambient occlusion, we don't ever want to ever turn on ambient occlusion like that. We don't ever want this. This is a global ambient occlusion. Uh, you only want to turn ambient occlusion on per texture, which I would guess I would have to show you that. But don't use this. This will screw things up really badly um, unless you know how to change this stuff. And honestly, I I don't like global um, global illuminate. I mean, um, global ambient occlusion on everything. It doesn't look good. You'll, it doesn't. It's just not going to be controlled. Um, as we look up to to bump the quality up here, uh, the highest I've ever gone for this stuff is this six four. That's going to allow for really clean reflections and pretty clean shadows. You can go to six six if you're like really feeling it, but honestly, I wouldn't. Medium is like four four. And if you have ambient occlusion in your textures, it's not that bad of a calculation. I would do like four. So four, 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 kind of like ProRes. But honestly, let's look at this. This is like kind of a max setting for me. And as I max this out, um, we go to custom. I max it around 150. Uh, but it does go to 200 for some reason. I have no idea why that's 200. That just doesn't make any sense to me. But um, Radiant Sketch, I never changed that. I've never ever had to change it. If you do, it starts to really kill you. This can go up to like 20k, and pre-filter can go to like 32. Um, these are for like your your interiors that are like with one light on, you're going to need to start cranking this stuff. If you only have one small light source, it's going to be noisy. Um, that's just how rendering works. So here's my like quote-unquote cranked settings at 540. Of course, you can go to 720p, 1080p, and your render times will take four times as long, more or less, if you're going to be doing that. So here, watch the light mapping here. This is a 20k light map. Um... So far it's taking, looks like this is going to take like a minute, 30 seconds to a minute just for the light mapping process. Um, I'm sorry if this video is really boring. I'm also not recording my screen or my face because I don't have time for that. That takes a little bit longer. My cameras are all packed up. I'm filming a lot of um, live action stuff for the main YouTube channel these days. So it's all packed up and I didn't feel like pulling it out. Anyway, so let's see. Uh, yeah, so that took 40 seconds to light map that, right? Versus like, say, 40 seconds to just have this render done. Right? So you got to really weigh your options here. Nine times out of 10 for Cine Design, we don't really care about final quality. We really just feel, care about communication and speed. When you're starting with a director, I think this is a perfectly fair place to start. And as you start to refine it, and if this is something agency or client's going to see, then yeah, go to, go to something like that. And if you know you have one big beauty render for the... Uh, for the client or something like that, if you're real or however you're presenting yourself as a cine designer, um, then that's when you're gonna like do this and be like, oh, okay, I'll be back in like an hour <laughs> and just let that crank. Um, I, I really don't think that we have to spend a lot of time rendering for professional cine design. Uh, the point is to iterate quickly. I think that honestly, if you did, like if compared to having one beautiful angle like this, if you dropped, um, you know, in the same amount of time, four different angles at this quality, I think that that's going to help your team a lot more. Um, so yeah, so here we're, we're going to let this crank out. This is going to take a long time. I don't really want to sit here for this. Yeah, I'm just going to kill this. You can see that this is probably going to take, I would guess, about 10 minutes to render, which is not terrible, but it's it doesn't allow you to iterate quickly. So really stay with these low settings in the beginning. And the last thing that I'll say here is when you go to physical, if you turn depth of field on, which I think I showed you how to do this in a different video. Motion blur, oh my god, if you turn this on, it kills your renders. Um, I don't ever think motion blur is worth it for us. For like a real 3D animation company, yeah, it's gonna be worth it, but uh, I wouldn't. If your depth of field is looking like ultra crappy, like ultra super terrible, then you have to change this. Which if you do that, this will start to really eat up your render time. So let's just check this out. I'll go back to 1.1 here. Uh, GI, let's turn this back to like 5,000 
pre-filtered down to like wait, wait, eight or something. Low, custom, we'll go back to like 25. Keep it real crappy, but let's see what happens. If you change to medium here, you're gonna get like less anti-aliasing, which is like the jagged lines, and you're gonna get smoother uh, bokeh, which is, uh, it, you know, I mean, it's it's good for like final render, but for us, it, it really doesn't matter um, at all. This These are settings that you change when you're like a 3D animator and your job is to drop 3D animated frames that look really good, and that's the final product. This is, of course, not our final product. This is just for visualization. So it's probably gonna be hard to see here, um, but overall, this entire image is gonna be sharper and cleaner as you start to change that main sampling up. Anyway, to start, use physical, use 1-1. One, one. Uh, you'll do fine, right? It, the, the reflections will look pretty crappy at first. You can start to change this to like four and this to two. That would get you something, and then six four is where I max it. If you have like a mega computer, like some like some of you guys I know you have, you can crank this even higher. If you have a lot of CPUs, this becomes trivial. Uh, we don't have a trivial, but it, it's I'm on a MacBook Pro. I have to really consider what I'm doing here. One one will get you 90% through your project. I hope. Turn on GI. Uh, keep this off in the beginning. Custom accuracy. Keep it low. Keep it really low. Like, 100 is, like, okay, and if you're, like, really, like, full crazy, you can do 200. But, I mean, honestly, 25 for a lot of it gets me through a lot of my projects. Keep this at low, of course. Uh, I never change that. I just never do. Even for, like, final renders, I never change it. Light mapping, you turn it on. Uh, the more samples you put in path count, the less noise, sort of, will be in the uh, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth bounces. Pre-filter. Um, if you're in a small room with artifacting, you start to crank this number up. 32 is as high as I ever go. Again, if you have a massive computer, you can be like, oh, 64, but 32 is a lot. Uh, for your light map, which is only going to be adding so much to the scene. That's going to wrap it up for this video. This is uh, a look at some render settings. Also, how to use textures on floors. I don't know if I've ever covered that before. Eventually, you won't have to do any of that when set de designer is all done, but like I said, that might be a little bit. Uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what other stuff you want to see. Uh, what do we have to get done? I want to show you guys how to make a psych wall. There's a lot. I know there's a lot. And I need to put more time into this channel. Thank you guys for using Cinema Designer. If you're not using Cinema Designer, just learning Cinema 4D from the channel. That's hilarious.